Hey everyone, today we're going to do front brake pads on a V-Star 1100 Silverado. Doing this job wrong will kill you or others around you, so if you're not mechanically inclined, enjoy the video and take your bike to be done professionally. That's my warning. A Silverado has two sets of brake calipers. It's just the same as a classic, except you'll be doing it twice. We'll note that in this video, my brakes turn out to be just fine, but I'm going to remove everything, clean it, and reinstall it just as if it was a new kit. So let's get started. I'll point out that I have the EBC brake pads. They're very good, but they do not come with the extra parts. So if you're going to replace the extra parts as pointed out in the manual, you're going to have to order them separately. That includes one anti-rattle spring and two support pads. The OEM brake pads from Yamaha come with these parts included. Before you get started, have an electrical insulated wire on standby, as well as a towel. We're going to kick things off with the 10 mil, and that's used to hold this bracket, and that holds the brake line securely. Put this off to the side. With that, the brake line is now free from the fender. Next, we're going to use a 6 mil hex socket. This bolt is actually just a very long guide pin, and the thread work is actually just by the head. All I'm doing first is breaking torque on each bolt, nothing more. Then each of them could be just unscrewed with an extension. If the recess was properly greased, we could see here that there's no rust or any accumulation, but some old grease just at the end of the bolts, as we see. I'm going to make sure I have that cable and clean towel within arm's reach. And I'm going to wrap that cable a couple of wraps around the turn signal here. I'm going to bring my hand around the caliper and I'm going to hold the brake pad on the back because once I remove the caliper, there's nothing to hold that brake pad. It's just going to fall out onto the rim, onto the floor. So with it secured, I'm just going to bring the caliper back and right off. And we could see that my finger is still holding on to that brake pad. As I pull my fingers away, we're going to see that brake pad is just going to fall right off. I'll catch it. You can see it's loose. So I'm just going to let it fall, and now I'm just going to pull it right off the bike, and I'm going to put it off to the side. That top pad will just stay there. That's fine. Now I'm going to bring that electrical wire through that top hole so that there's no stress on the brake lines, and I'm going to just give it a couple twists, and I'll be able to rest that caliper on the towel behind the fender. Now I could take that top pad out, being mindful of what pad went where, in my case, if you're going to be reusing them because I could see I still have a good amount of life left on my pads and I want to put them back in in the order that they were moved. I'm going to give this whole area a good cleaning, remove all the brake dust residue and road grime. Also go around these areas where these rubber dust caps are. I'm going to pull off the bottom support pad and clean it so I could demonstrate putting it back on later, though I'm reusing mine because I'm reusing my brake pads. I don't have any new support pads. I'm going to clean under where that pad was. Then I'm going to remove the top support pad and do the same thing. I'm going to clean this up as well and observe any wear marks that are in there. This one looks good. Here we have the caliper suspended by the electrical cable. Extremely important that you never depress the brake handle at this time or those pistons will shoot right in. Be a bad scene. And now we're going to clean this portion up. As I clean inside the caliper, we'll see buried inside here all the way at the bottom in the middle is the anti-rattle spring, which I'll now pull up to remove. And I kind of shot it out a bit. That's fine. I'll go get it. I'm going to clean up under where the spring was first. And that spring will be cleaned. Before continuing, it's important that we inspect the brake fluid level. In the reservoir so i'm going to open up my reservoir using a 3.5 mil hex key as the brake pads wear out and the pistons push outward more to compensate the fluid level drops and if you've been keeping your fluid up to level over time and the fluid levels right when we push those pistons in later to reset them it may raise the fluid over the top of the reservoir and you can have a mess on your hands so as we open this up if the fluid is all the way at the top and the pistons are still pushed out on the bottom a bit, we're going to have to remove some brake fluid here. So we're going to have a look. We should be okay. Generally, pushing in pistons calls for a tool like this. We could just use our fingers on this bike. So with a view to the reservoir above, take the caliper, and one at a time, we'll compress the pistons with our two thumbs like this, and they go in. You can see that. And now we'll do the other piston 
You could watch it slowly, very slowly driving back in. It took multiple sessions because, yeah, it's not so easy, but you can see it pushing in. There you go, seated. And just a couple more times, and eventually it'll seat all the way in. It doesn't sit flush. It sits just a little bit proud like that. So I'll give this one more shot, and we should be good to go. There we are. Now the pistons are seated in. Place the caliber back down, look at the reservoir, and see how much it went up. We can see the reservoir went up a couple of millimeters, but it's still in a good level, so it'll be good for bleeding. We'll leave it here. Here's the two tabs that hold the anti-rattle spring to the caliper. I've cleaned up mine for reinsertion. So place in like this, and just push down both sides to snaps into place. And there we go. The spring is set. Again, I've cleaned up my brake pad because it has a lot of life left. What I do is I use the tiniest drop of anti-seize on this portion right here, and on the back where the piston faces touch it just enough to color it i mean just a tiny amount if you don't feel comfortable doing it don't do it or if you can't use just a tiny amount i encourage you not to do it but that's what i do just the tiniest glaze and i reinsert it the top one now finished if these are looking dry i'll put a little bit of grease in these dust caps just a little bit half pea size right here holding the caliper i'll now remove that support wire and having prepped the other brake pad like the first, I will slide it into position. And holding it in place, I'll bring the caliper around and over both brake pads until it is seated so the brake pads won't fall off of the bike. Taking my time to line everything up. I want to make sure those dust caps aren't deformed, that everything is in place. There's a lot of deflection here, obviously, because the pistons are all the way in. And my brake pads aren't brand new, so there's some gap that's fine. And I'm going to introduce those set pin bolts. And as I do and I spin it, that little bit of grease that I put in the dust caps is getting on the set pin portion of the bolt and not on the threads, which was my intent to make sure that they don't get dry or rusty inside that mechanism. So I'm going to hand turn in that top bolt, make sure everything's good. And the same thing with the bottom bolt, getting a little bit of that grease exposure on the set pin and now turning in the threads on the top portion. These bolts are torqued down to 17 foot pounds, which is 205 inch pounds. So I'll do the bottom one first, then I'll do the top one. Then I'll reintroduce the screw for the brake line support bracket. And then I'll just snug this down. We can see obviously still a lot of deflection left in the caliper, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pump it up from the brake handle and we're going to watch the brake pump up as I do it and then we'll check it again and we'll see if there's no deflection once the brakes are pumped up. Now we'll retest and the brakes are solid. The fluid in my reservoir has now dropped down to the original level. After the front brake pads are serviced, the brake system in the front should definitely be bled. A link in the top right corner will take you to a video on the bleeding of the front brakes on a V-Star 1100. The feel of the brakes and the ability to hold the wheel should be adequately tested before attempting to operate the bike. And that concludes our video on the replacement of the brake pads on the front of a V-Star 1100. I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button to be notified about more videos like this when they come out. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply? <laughs> <laughs>